We're here at Richard Underwood Nature Reserve, where AWC is doing a comprehensive hair census of all the burrows in the site to be able to learn how we can best contribute to northern hairy nose wombat recovery. And the way we do this is actually pretty nifty. We don't need to bother the wombats in terms of actually capturing them and taking DNA samples. We can actually come into the burrows here, put some double-sided sticky tape into the burrows, and at night, when the wombats come in and out, they leave some hair samples from us. So what we're doing now is actually collecting some of the individual hairs that we collected from the burrows. And what Andy's doing is he's actually looking for hairs that have really good hair follicles on them because that's where most of the DNA is stored on these hairs. And then we're actually putting them in some pre-made solution where the solution is breaking down the cells and starting to extract the DNA out here in the field, giving us the best chance to have really good results in the lab. So the northern hairy-nosed wombat is a critically endangered species. Back in the 80s, they actually declined down to 30, 35 individuals. And thanks to the recovery efforts of the Queensland government, they're up to 400 individuals now. And here at Richard Underwood Nature Reserve, AWC is trying to learn some really basic information about how the population here can best contribute to the recovery of the species. We're starting with some really simple things like how many individuals there are. And through this technique, we can actually identify individuals from these hairs and count how many individuals there are by censusing the burrows that are out in the landscape. Next, what we can do is use the DNA also to look at relatedness among individuals. So we can see, you know, is the population quite small here and at risk of things like inbreeding depression or how many individuals are breeding, how many males are contributing, how many females are contributing to the population. And what that allows us to do is to work with the other populations of wombats that are around and figure out how to do the best kind of metapopulation management. And that simply means, you know, because the wombats can't move themselves around the landscape very easily, we can learn how we can best help the whole species recover by potentially working together among the different populations.